good thing. Excellent. So we are doing good. So I am here with Patricia Taylor. And Patricia is the author of the book Expanded Orgasm. She is also author of a book that I first came across, and that's how I met Patricia, called The Enchantment of Opposites. And uh, we'll be talking about both these books. And Patricia also has her own video, and this is in DVD form, as I understand. Oh, absolutely, with 45 extra minutes. Wow. Yeah. And that's called Expanding Her Orgasm Tonight. Expand Her Orgasm Tonight. That's right. Right. So we're going to be discussing these throughout our interview with Patty. Great. So, Patty, can I call you Patty, first of all? Yes. Okay. It's been, uh, first of all, I just want to share some personal experience that I've had in your work. Um, I believe it was almost four years ago now that, um, that we, it's better to, to look at me okay. and yeah. not even pay attention Thank to the you. camera. Yeah. So I believe it was almost four years ago that I first came across your work. And I remember there were about three couples and we assembled in somebody's living room and um, I had a mind-blowing experience of your work. And, uh, and then when you left, I kind of forgot about it, hmm. you know, because being in New York City, it's so easy to get distracted with so many things. But what happened to me was um, I accidentally started trying your work maybe four months later with a partner and I was reminded of the miracle of your work and I remember from that point forward I realized that you were a person that I definitely wanted to learn from and make sure that the rest of the world knew about your work because I, I just think it's that critical and that important and not only that it's the most it's the most effective work I've ever seen it actually works. So we're going to take a break because I need water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's fine. That's what's great about television. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. <clears throat> so we may jump. We may jump around chronologically because I certainly knew about you way before then. And I will want to talk about okay. that. Okay, you know what? This is, as long as you don't mind editing, I'm very good at flow. Good. So That's I can just roll with anything. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Um, where I want to start with in terms of asking you about your work, and I, I do want to get very deep into your work, is, um, is its relationship in terms of helping couples create and sustain an ongoing ecstatic relationship. Mm -hmm. As you know, most couples, myself included, mm -hmm. we enter into our first falling in love stage and it's a wonderful period to go through. We wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Mm -hmm. And some of us fall over the abyss and fail disastrously with it. Or some of us fall off a cliff and totally mess up the whole thing. Some of us go on to kind of get back into a reality stage and we kind of settle for one another at our realistic stage versus the ecstatic stage that we first had for our partner. Or some of us kind of struggle and spend most of our relationship life trying to struggle. I'm just curious, um, how does your work relate to creating sustainable ecstatic relationship for couples? Okay, well, first I want to say um, my work is not for all couples. Because I think that there are many uh, different goals that couples might have together as couples, um, or let's say primary goals. If your primary goals are to raise children, um, then that might dictate, um, you know, a certain uh, types of uh, ways of working together mm -hmm. that uh, that might not be what I would recommend um, to get the job done. And it's also true that the same couple, as they go through uh, stages in their life, uh, might find that at one stage uh, they want one kind of a relationship, and as they're in a different stage of their life, they might want a different thing. So I want to say that uh, my 
my work is for a, a couple who wants a certain kind of experience from relationship, okay? And what I uh, offer couples uh, is an experience where the, uh, the potential for passion, uh, for communication, for connection is, uh, feels like it's getting more and more alive, um, is growing um, over time. And with it, the turn on, uh, the turn on, the heat, the electricity, when you touch your partner is growing over time. And I have to say it, but that's, I think that's a lot easier said than done. That's very easily said, and it's a lot, and, and there's a lot of people that will say, it will sell you that, and, um, but it's a, it's a lifetime practice to achieve. And that's what we teach people. I see. You know, you, you're saying that, um, first of all, you're saying that it's for couples that would desire an ongoing and deeper communication and a deeper connection. But don't most couples desire that? I mean, isn't that the goal of most couples to get together and to deepen their intimacy with one another? Or is that something that only a few couples desire in their relationship? Uh, sure, everybody wants that, you know, but it always comes at a price. So it's really, do, are, you, do you, are you willing to pay the price? And I think when people see what it costs is when uh, couples, when the individuals often will, will either just say, oh, that's not for me, or they'll say, gee, I really want that, but I'm, I just can't pay that. And uh, an analogy would be uh, someone who uh, is overweight and would like to be slim and just can't lose the weight. Uh, what would it take to um, really be on a path of uh, going deeper with your partner? Um, it, but uh, would be, for example, uh, being on a path of uh, revealing who you are, of learning to bec uh, become a witness to uh, your emotions, uh, learning to not buy into these feelings, but staying present with them, sharing them with your partner, uh, doing the same for your partner, uh, so that you're revealing more and more to each other. Uh, I mean, but it, the list goes on and on and on. It's a process that you both commit to the way you would a diet or a workout program, and it goes further from there, uh, where you want to learn how to touch each other, where you literally where you build a life, where that's a very central part of it, is that you become people that have differentiation in your lives, so that you're not fused together, and you are skilled as lovers. You you learn to navigate the transition from being hot, passionate, and different to being bonded and connected and bringing variety into your sex life so that when you are bonded, you still have new and different. Wow, so let's, let's talk about variety for a second. Great. Is variety possible with, say, a, a couple that just choose to stay monogamous and, and find pleasure between themselves? Or does variety mean finding or bringing in other lovers into their relationship? Well, I think variety is one of the key things that a couple who's monogamous uh, really needs to learn uh, in order to uh, have a growing uh, passion. Now, first of all, I want to say it's totally possible to have a, a, a sensual, beautiful, erotic, uh, connection that grows ever deeper over time. Uh, here's the problem in a nutshell, going now from relationship into the love life, so just 
pointing out, we're kind of shifting here. Can you hold that thought sure. for a second? I'd be delighted. I'm going to do a, clo a little bit of a close-up on us and see if we can get a little bit more. Let's just see if that will work for us. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. So here, you said, here's the... Well, here's the challenge. When two people first meet, there's this uh, fabulous attraction because uh, I'm very different from you and you're very different from me and there's an animal attraction often uh, because we're so different and it's exciting um, to, to, to fuse and, and merge and to capture uh, someone who's very different and discover and work out all these differences. It's, it's exciting. Uh, as, as a couple works out some of these differences and sort of captures the object of their attraction, uh, these differences tend to go away. They work things out. They become more like each other. And what, what you get is you get a couple that become um, more similar to each other. They become bonded the differences go away. They tend to agree on everything. I know what you like, you know what I like. We agree on things uh, or we disagree, but w w it's settled. Um, and, um, and the mystery goes away. And so it's flat. Well, now what do you do? Hmm. So the you know, supposedly the excitement goes away. The friendship has come in, mm -hmm. but the excitement has gone away. Well, this is where variety it saves the day now um, in a big way. Hmm. Wow. What variety, now what does variety do? Okay, well, variety is not just about b going out and buying the Kama Sutra and following all the different positions. That is one form of variety, but there's only 22 positions. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, do the math. I mean, in a year, even that could get boring. But the reality is, is that there's an infinite amount of variety that we are capable of doing. Um, there are different ways of breathing. Um, these are the things, of course, that I teach mm -hmm. in some of expanded orgasm. There, let, me just, let me just give one example of okay. variety, 